baseball has returned. Yes! It's going to be just 60 games this season, which I think is actually really exciting. Each game is really matters. I mean, I think each game is equivalent to 2.7 games of a normal season. Um, there's going to be no fans in the stands, but still going to be fun to watch on television. There's a universal DH this year now, which I think is super exciting. It's incredibly boring to watch pitchers bat. <laughs> Um, I, I love the extra innings uh, rule this year. They're going to have a um, – each team's going to have a man on second. Um, so it's going to, I think, help shorten games. Um, so there's not going to be like 12 or 13 innings in a, in a, in a game now. Um, and opening day is scheduled for July 23rd as the recording of this video. So get ready for baseball. Um I think it's going to be really interesting. I think stats like home run leaders and pitching wins and strikeout leaders leaders aren't going to really matter or be a big deal this year, and it really shouldn't increase a player's value. So I, I think home run hitters like Juan Soto and Vlad and, and Pete Alonso, I don't think people are really going to care if they hit 15 to 20 home runs. I mean, it's just it's not going to be the same as if they hit 50 to 60 home runs. Um, so I, I think what's going to happen is – with a 60 game season, it can make some for some interesting possibilities of reaching these really key milestones. And if any of these players reach these milestones, it's going to definitely increase the value of their cars and, and certainly the, their stature um, in baseball. Um, so the first milestone that a player could reach is the 400 batting average. Yes, it's not going to be the same as if they played 162 games, but it's still will be a pretty big deal. No one has hit 400 since Ted Williams did it in 1941. Um, 60 games means it's technically easier to reach that milestone. Uh, players won't get as fatigued down the stretch if they're trying to maintain a 400 batting average. You know, for a full 162 games, where it's 60 games, it's just not going to be as much of a toll on the body. Um, at the same time, it also takes some time to get back into the swing of things, and they're going to have to get you know, ready to go with a, a very short and, sp um, you know, warm up. Um, uh, and then since 2000, there's only been one player, Chipper Jones, who has batted 400 in the first 60 games. So it's definitely possible. Uh, Chipper hit 408 in the first 60 games in 2008. Um, Joey Votto batted 402 for the final 80 games in 2016. And each row hit 429 after the All-Star break in 2004. So it's definitely possible to hit 400 um, in this shortened season. And I think the players that could do that this year, um, I think it could be Cody Bellinger. Um, he, you know, in the past 10 years, I think Cody Bellinger has, he, he has come the closest to reach 400 in the first 60 games. He hit 376 last year. Um, definitely, um, uh, didn't to didn't do as well the second half of the season, but he still did incredibly well the first half of the season. He has a career batting average of just 278, which isn't great, but uh, I, I think he's definitely completely changed his game around, and he could possibly reach the 400 um, batting average milestone. Granted, it's going to be extremely tough. Another player that could do it is Christian Yelich. Um, he batted 329. Um, last year and and 326 in 2018, um, he certainly has the talent. Um, we'll see if he if he's healthy enough. He you know he had that that knee injury at the end of last year, but uh, he's he bats his batting average over his seven year um, career is 301, and I think he could do it. I mean who knows? But his is his his key card is a 2013 Topps update US 290. Another another player that could do it is Mike Trout. I don't really need to explain it. I mean, he's Mike Trout. We all know he's the best player in baseball and, and, and just a once-in-a-generation talent. He, uh, his career batting average is 305. His highest batting average for a season is 326. And his key card to get is the 2011 Topps Update card that has absolutely exploded in price um, this offseason. And then... Another player that I think could do it is Mookie Betts. Um, certainly has a lot to prove this year. He's just like under a one-year contract with the Dodgers. Um, 
but he's bat he's uh he batted 346 in 2018. He, he's still in his prime, and I, I think he could still do it. And his key card to get is the 2014 top set date, US 26. Um, and then I have a couple what I'd like to call uh, dark horse picks, players you wouldn't really think of, think of reaching 400 hits. Um, and that is DJ LeMahieu. Um, he batted 348 in 2017. Granted, he was in Colorado. Um, he batted 327 last year when he was a Yankee, and it certainly is not easy to be a Yankee. It's a lot of pressure. But he um, he he's, he bats uh, 302 for his career in a, in a nine-year career, so he's a strong hitter for average. Um, his key card to get is a 2011 Topps Update US 205. Another dark horse player is Jeff McNeil. He's a Mets player. Maybe some of you haven't even heard of him. He batted 321. Um, he's, he's batted 321 for his career. Granted, he's only played a season and a half. He was basically a rookie last year. Uh, his, his key card to get is the 2019 tops number 281. But he could he could be a big surprise this year. Another guy who was also a rookie last year that is has shown promise of being a great um, hitter for average is Luis Arias. Um, last year's rookie year, he hit 334 uh, in 92 games. He's a small guy who hits for average. He's not hitting for power. He's he's a lot like Jose Altuve, without the trash cans. <laughs> um, his his key card to get is the 2019 Topps Update US 247. Uh, players, I just want to mention really quickly that I don't think we'll reach have a possibility of reaching the 400 milestone is Tim Anderson. He, he led the league last year with a 335 batting average, but uh, his career average is 276 uh, as over a span of four years. And then Kensel Marte, he batted 329 last year, which is great, but uh, uh, his career batting average is 282 over a five-year uh, career span. Um, and then I don't think Jose Altuve, although he's been known for – doing really well in terms of uh, his batting average. I think he's under a, a hell of a lot of pressure this year. Uh, no no, no trash can help. Although what is going to help the Astros this year is they're not playing in front of fans, which we all thought was going to happen. And so there's not that added pressure of, of, of fans heckling them. Boo! You stink! Um, which could help the Astros and the Astros players. Just something to look out for. All right, another... Milestone that might be attainable this year due to the shortened season is the Triple Crown. Um, I think this is actually a little more attainable than the 400 um, batting average. It's certainly not easy, though. But uh, the reason why I think that is uh, because there there might be less competition. Like, if any of these star players get sick, um, there's just going to be less competition to, to you know, to reach the RBI, you know, RBI batting, bat, RBI title, home run title, batting average title. So I would look out for players um, like Cody Bellinger. I'm not gonna, you know, this is his card again to get. Um, Mike Trout because he's Mike Trout. Christian Yelich, who almost um, got the triple crown in 2018. I, I think he'd be my top pick to get the treble crown. Uh, Nolan Arenado. Don't sleep on Nor Nolan Arenado. It's a great time to pick up his cards. He's still very undervalued compared to the other stars. Um, he's He has three home run titles, two RBI titles, and usually has a good batting average. And his key card to get is the 2013 Topps Update US 259. Rafael Devers had an outstanding year last year. Uh, Mookie Betts isn't th on the Red Sox anymore, so he this could be his moment to shine. But he he hit 311 with 32 home runs and 115 RBIs last year. Um, and his key card to get is a 2018 Topps number 18. Another guy who might get might be able to get the uh, triple crown this season um, is Jordan Alvarez. He hit 313 with 27 home runs and 78 RBIs in just 87 games last year. Still hasn't had like a really a full season, but at the same time, he's he's not going to have a full season this year either. Uh, but his key card to get is the two, uh, 2020 tops number 276. And then a kind of a dark horse for who I think could possibly get the triple crown this season is J.D. Martinez. 
Yeah, I mean, if you look at his stats, he does have a chance. Um, definitely a sleeper pick, but his card to get is the 2011 Topps Update US 186. Another another, another milestone that could be achieved with this 60-game shortened season is a pitcher might pitch below 1.0 for his ERA. I think this actually might be the most attainable milestone uh, for this, this upcoming season. Um, I think the candidates, the strongest candidates – to reach that milestone is Jacob DeGrom would be one. He uh, pitched 1.7 in 2018, uh, 1.7 ERA. And his key card to get is a 2014 Tops Update US 50. Um, and actually, if you want to pick up his key rookie auto, he doesn't have any Bowman Chrome autos, but uh, his key autograph card is actually the 2014 Tops Heritage auto card. And then Blake Snell could be another candidate. He pitched uh, 1.89 ERA in 2018. Um, he didn't play too well last year, but he, I think he's still a very strong player. And the key card to get of his is the 2016 Tops Update card or his Chrome card. Um, there's just not too many cards graded of, of, of Snell's. And then Mike Soroka could be another candidate to pitch under 1, uh, 1.0 ERA. I think Soroka is the next stud. He could be the next Walker Bueller, and he's you know, he's pitching for the Braves, and the Braves are going to be in the World Series soon. I, I, it's like a guarantee. They're, they're so stacked. Soroka is only 21. He pitched 2.68 last year, and his key card to get is the 2018 Tops Update US 68. And then Jack uh, Flaherty is another guy I would look out for, who could who could maybe reach this milestone. Um, because in, in his final 12 starts of last year, he posted a, a one or a 0.77 ERA. So he did a, a sub 1.0 ERA, uh, towards the end of the, of the year last year. And he pitched 2.75 for the year. Um, so don't sleep on Jack Fla- uh, Flaherty. He's still a young pitcher too. Um, and his key card to get is the 2018 tops number 93. And then finally Clayton Kershaw. Yes, he hasn't pitched below 2.0 since 2016 when he pitched uh, 1.69, but you can't count him out. He's still great. Older, yes, but still great. I mean, he's 32. He, he's he's not in the twilight years of his career like Max Scherzer and Justin Verlander, who I just don't think could could reach the milestone um, this year. And I think Garrett Cole, as another guy, I don't think could could get it because. You know, he's, he pitched 2.50 in 2019, which is his best ERA, but he's on the Yankees. There's just a ton of pressure pitching for the Yankees. And I, I don't I don't see it happening for him. Um, and then some other notable milestones that I don't think too many people are, are thinking about. Um, now, there's certainly not going to be any, you know, 40-40 club for Ronald Acuna. I'm trying to get his card. Um, but... He could reach the 2020 club, which I think is still pretty impressive. 20 home runs and 20 steals. Um, now, Eric Davis actually did it in his first 60 games back in 1987. Um, so I think it would, it would still be very impressive if Acuna does 2020. And it should certainly help his car prices even more. Um, but it just goes to show, man, like, you know, how good Eric Davis was. And, and hopefully... Acuna can, can stay healthy and not turn into Eric Davis with all these injuries. Um, and then another notable milestone that I think is borderline impossible but could still be achieved with this shortened 60-game season is the 56-hit streak. Uh, Joe DiMaggio has a record for 56 um, hits, hit, you know, 56 games of – or say 56 – today junior it's hits and um you know since there's only 60 games this year it's, it's possible <laughs> um certainly you have to start the season off with a bang to do it but who knows my money would be on mike trout to do it um and then something to think about too um is since there's 60 games I'm trying to get the card there's since there's 60 games um and there's going to be 40 games against divisional foes. So they're going to play each team 10 times. And they're going to play 20 interleague games against the geographical equivalent. So one-sixth of the season, a guy like 
Glaber Torres is going to be playing the Baltimore Orioles. Now, if you remember Torres last year against the, the uh, Baltimore, he hit 13 home runs and batted 394 in the 18 games he played against them. So, man, I mean, a guy like Torres could have a huge year this year if he's playing Baltimore for one-sixth of the season. I mean, who knows? Maybe he could be the dark horse for MVP. He puts up those kind of numbers. Um, then finally, I just want to mention some players that I would not buy because they're just going to fall short of, of milestones. These, these are players that that's, were, would probably not make the Hall of Fame, but they could if they reached the 3,000 hit club or 500 home club, but I just don't think it's going to happen. Um, but – you know, it it should also be noted that situations happen. You know, Ted Williams could have reached 3,000 hits. Now, obviously, he's in the Hall of Fame. But he missed three seasons due to the war. And a guy like Fred McGriff has 493 home runs for his career, and he would have been a lock for the Hall of Fame if it reached 500 home runs. But it's because of the 1994 strike. It just never happened. Um, so here's some guys I just I, I would just avoid buying that have had some hype the last couple of years that, that I've actually hyped before. Uh, one is Nick Markakis. Um, some people believe he could, he could reach 3,000 hits, but he's at 2,355 2, hits at age 36. Let's say he puts up 80 hits for the season. That would bring his total to 2,435 hits. He averages about 180 hits a full season, so that would take him about 3.1 years to reach 3,000 hits, and he'll be um, potentially in his 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 uh, age 40 season. He'll be, he'll be 40 years old when he reaches that milestone. And I, I just don't know if a guy like Nick Markakis is going to last that long in the league. Um, and then another guy I think won't make it. And I just would avoid picking up his cards is, is Jay Bruce. He's at, he's at a, he's a guy a lot of people thought could, could reach the five run home run club. He's at 312 home runs at, uh, at 33. Let's say he does really well this year and he hits 15 home runs. That would bring his career total to 327 home runs um he averages 31 home runs during a full season so that would take him 5.5 seasons to reach 500 500 home run club and he'll be 38 when that happens now 38 seems like a doable age to to to, to still still be in the league and reach that milestone but i don't think it's doable for, for jay bruce i mean he's hitting 245 for his career He's a lot like Adam Dunn, and Adam Dunn retired at 34 with 462 home runs. So I just don't think Bruce is going to make it to his age 38 season. And he just gets injured a lot too. He's a huge liability. And then you got a player like Miguel Cabrera, which I actually think I would pick up his cards, although they're certainly gone up in value in the off season. But he's a guy that's not going to reach the, his milestones this year. He's at 477 home runs for, for his career. So he's not going to get the five in the home run club this year, nor will he get at the 3000 hits because he's at 2,815 hits. He's 37. And I think he'll certainly reach those milestones next year, next season. Um, but yeah, definitely look out for his cards, uh, this year, if they go down in price, cause they're going to be a steal cause they're going to go way up in value when he reaches the milestones next, um, next season finally um yeah i think this is a very interesting season right i mean just 60 games instead of 162 games and i think that's a good thing i think this could be an interesting test for major league baseball i mean there's been rumors for years about shortening the season uh, i know baseball purists don't want to change that format i think it would be a good thing i you know it would be interesting to have a season where there's just 120 games i think it would just make Games matter more and make people want to tune in more to to, to more games. Um, and uh, I also think it's very interesting that you know they're doing this this extra inning where there's there's a man on second. That could be a, a thing. I hope they they do moving forward. Um, I think it's been implemented in a lot of the minor league games. Um, so yeah, that's it. Baseball is back. Um, Please like and subscribe and stay tuned for more videos later.